Hello everyone and thank you for watching. My name is Jacques Defossé and my colleague's name is Adam Gribi. Today we're going to discuss about our navigation system project titled Attitude Determination of a Satellite Using a Gyroscope and Two Star Trackers. Adam and myself are both master's student in aerospace engineering. Adam is an exchange student from Germany and I'm from Polytechnic. We're both passionate about space and that's the reason why we've decided to focus on a project where we determine the attitude of a spacecraft in 3D. Navigation systems are critical in space and we wanted to know more about them. This presentation is split as follows. We're first going to describe the system, the frames of reference and the sensors, and then we're going to move to the heart of the problem, the attitude estimation, the mechanization equations, the linearized row model and the filter design. Afterwards, we're going to talk about the simulations that we performed on the system and we're going to discuss about the results that we obtained and we're going to have a short conclusion afterwards. Our system has two types of sensors, one tree axis gyroscope for dead reckoning and two lower rate star trackers for position fixing. This combination of sensors is very popular in the space industry and it's very often seen on spacecrafts. We're going to fusion the measurements from the sensors using a multiplicative extended Kalman filter. The method that we used to develop this filter is, is based on the book on the right by Mark Lane Cressidus. It's a very thorough book. We also relied on the course notes. The satellite is in low Earth orbit, 300 kilometers of altitude. Its orbital period is 90 minutes, so that's going to be our simulation time. One we're, we're, we're going to perform simulations for one orbit. We've selected an equatorial prograde orbit. We're going to discuss in a minute what that means. More importantly, we expect the system to be accurate up to one arc second. That's mainly due to the high accuracy sensors that have been selected and that we're going to discuss in a minute as well. At this point in the term, we hope you're familiar with the ECI frame of reference. We still need to discuss it a little bit because it's really important in our project. For celestial applications, the star tracker measurements are reported with respect to the ECI frame, and the gyroscope measurements are made with respect to the ECI frame as well. So that's very convenient for us because we're going to do all our filtering and obtain the attitude quaternion in the ECI frame. The navigation frame is the orbital plane, and since the topic of this project is really the navigation system, we didn't want to spend too much time on orbital mechanics, although we like that topic very much as well. To simplify our life a little bit, we, we selected an orbit that's going to help us simplify the rotation matrix from I to N. We selected an equatorial prograde orbit, so prograde because the satellite turns in the same direction as the Earth. Also, since it's equatorial, the y-axis of the navigation frame is always parallel to the z-axis of the inertial frame. So we end up with this nice rotation matrix on the lower left. But um, this is really a simplification because as soon as the orbit is elliptical, then it's, it's, it's a little bit more cumbersome to compute the rotation matrix. The last frame of reference that we need to discuss is the body frame. The most important thing about the body frame is that it's perfectly aligned with the navigation frame when the attitude is zero degree in roll, pitch, and yeah. For the rest, well, you know, the x-axis goes from the back to the front of the satellite and the z-axis points towards the heart. But what does that mean, you know, for a satellite? What's the top of a satellite? Well, luckily for us, we didn't need to model the dynamics of the system this of the satellite we only needed the kinematics so that doesn't really matter for now let's talk about the sensors the first sensor is the gyroscope and fortunately for everybody we modeled it the same way that we've seen in class so you'll recognize the famous equation on the left one important thing to mention is that the MEKF equations that were derived in the reference book for us did not include the lambda time constants for the bias so we could say that we enhanced the MEKF model from Markley and Cressidus, but uh, 
they left us they, they left us really really good guidelines to do so. The data that was used for the simulation is shown in the table right there. It's a combination of uh, data that was in the book and also data that we found on um, for specific uh, gyroscopes on spacecraft. The second type of sensors are star trackers. We've selected two star trackers for our system. We're going to discuss why on the next slide, but it's mainly for higher accuracy. Talking about of accuracy, the star tracker is shown on the image as an accuracy of one arc second. It was developed by Southern's Hydra, and it's already old. It's, it, 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 this photo was taken in 2013. Mo you know, modern star trackers, or more modern star trackers, are even more accurate. Like they have an accuracy of 0.2 or 0.1 arc seconds in all three axes. But what is a star tracker? We've discussed it in class. But star trackers are high accuracy sensors. They capture images of stars and, and they compare the pattern of the images with known pattern of stars that they have in their catalog, and they, they determine the attitude of the body frame with respect to the ECI frame based on that. So they report measures in the form of uh, Euler angles, quaternions, or direction vectors. And for our project, we've decided to work with Euler angles. Now, we have two star trackers, but we've decided to fusion them before doing the filtering. And that's what we're going to discuss now. There are m multiple ways to fusion star trackers for Kalman filtering, but Hadam has had a class in Germany by Dr. Stephen Winkler. It's, it's, it's a class about spacecraft attitude determination and in class they specifically discuss the topic. So there's a simple math involved in combining measurements from two different star trackers with the same covariance and you basically end up with um, you know a covariance divided by two so you have better accuracy. Um, to prove that we've performed some Monte Carlo simulations and as you can see on the image when you have one star tracker, your covariance is higher, uh, but when you have uh, two star trackers, it's, 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 it's reduced. So you have high, higher accuracy. And that's what the method that we were going to employ before Kalman filtering. We're basically saying that we have two star trackers and we, we, we can assume that we have a single, me single measurement update with um, the covariance of the single star tracker divided by two. Now it's time to discuss the Kalman filtering and my colleague Adam is, go is going to take over. So now we want to describe our proposed solution to fuse the data of the gyro and the two star trackers. The goal is to estimate the attitude. Our approach is based on the multiplicative extended Kalman filter. So the goal of the filter is to estimate the quadrennium, which describes the, the rotation from frame E to frame B. In order to do that, we define a multiplicative error as, as expressed in equation 1. Before starting, starting with the equations of, Kalman, of the Kalman filter, we note that we use this not those uh, notation to simplify our equations. So now we want to describe our proposed solution to fuse the data of the gyro and the two star trackers. The goal is to estimate the attitude. Our approach is based on the multiplicative extended Kalman filter. So the goal of the filter is to estimate the quadrennium, which describes the, the rotation from frame E to frame B. In order to do that, we define a multiplicative error as, as expressed in equation 1. Before starting, starting with the equations of, Kalman, of the Kalman filter, we note that we use this not those uh, notation to simplify our equations. In order to obtain the mechanization equations, we differentiate the multiplicative error described above. So we find equation 2, where omega is the true angular rate and omega hat is the estimated angular rate. Then we make this approximation so that the three last components of the quaternion error are the angular error now. And then from the from the three third from the three last uh, lines from equation two, we find uh, the equation three, where omega 
where delta omega is the angular rate error. By using the sensor model described above, and, uh, we def and by defining the gyro state error, delta x omega, as the error between the, gy the true gyro state uh, and uh, the estimated gyro state, we obtain the following navigation equation described in 4. Now we're denoting the estimates with the hat symbol and we set uh, the error vectors to zero. So we obtain the equation fives, which are the, the mechanization equations uh, needed for the Kahneman filter. Before describing our algorithm, we have to linearize the, our system, our error model, model. So after linearizing the, the dynamics, we, um, we obtain the, the following equation six, so that our state vector is an error state vector, which composed by the minimized equatorian in error delta phi and the gyro state error delta x. So the state error contains a six components. The measures from the start trackers are Euler angles. To update our estimate, we transform the Euler angles to attitude quaternion Q. And then we compute the angle error, the angle error delta phi by using this equation. So as we, as we can see, this equation is linear in delta x. We obtain then C and D as follow. The measurement covariance matrix R is a 3 cross 3 matrix of the attitude measurement error angles. We assume that R is the covariance matrix from uh, the noise vector of the star trackers. So now, after linearizing our system, we can uh, describe our filter design. Our filter design we can, we can, be, sum, uh, can be summarized in four steps. The first step, uh, we have to initialize first the quaternion, the bias, and the covariance. And by using those linear uh, initialization, we can propagate our quaternion and covariance matrix. So first, for example, we for the quaternion, we uh, we integrate uh, the, we integrate by the quaternion kinematics equations by using the initial value. And then we set the omega hat, which is the, the estimated uh, angular rate, as follow. After, after the first step, after initialization and propagation, we can now uh, calculate or compute our gain ka, which is the Kalman gain. And once we have uh, our gain, we can, we can update we can update um, the covariance matrix and the error state vectors as follow. And as we see, as we see here, our multiplicative extended fil uh, Kalman, extended Kalman filter uh, estimates the state, uh, the error state, and not the quaternion. Once we have an estimate for the error, we can uh, we can update the attitude quaternion and the gyro state. So we can now we can now reset, and after that, we have to reset our delta x. We have to reset our error uh, state vector to zero. And then, after resetting the after resetting the value to zero, we can repeat all the steps starting from one to four, and taking those estimates as uh, as initial values. We present and analyze now our results. So the fusion of the star trackers and the gyro using the multiplicative extended Kalman version described above uh, provides an estimate of the satellizer attitude and the gyroscope biases. So first, we examine the system's behaviors with lambda equals zero. For the attitude estimation, we see in this figure that the filtered data follows the true error angle. 
The attitude error plots indeed show that the state that, that the system can achieve a pointing accuracy level of the 0 03 of about 0 03 arc second. So the red curves in the error plots uh, corresponds to the three sigma uh, of the start tracker. We have to note that those uh, those lines have been plotted for reference only and don't provide information on the statistics of the error. Here we represent our um, in those plots we represent our bias uh, bias estimations. So the red one is the true bias and the blue one is the estimated bias. And as we see, the algorithm is enabled to approximate the bias. Here, for example, is the bias error. And as we see, the bias doesn't converge and or oscillate around the expected bias zero. And due to this problem, we are actually enabled to determine the attitude accurately for simulations longer than two hours, as the system after two hours becomes unstable. In order to improve our results, we thought about uh, adjusting the gyro model by setting lambda different from zero. And those are our results for the bias. And as we see here, um, those figures demonstrate that the lower bias error is achieved, but the estimated biases are still far from the true values. As we see, uh, so the blue one are the estimated bias and the red one are the true bias. The accuracy of the attitude estimation is also slightly improved. So we didn't mention here because it's slightly improved, but it's still unstable for longer simulation periods. So in summary, we can affirm that the navigation system generates acceptable attitude esti estimates for the period of interest which corresponds to an orbit. However, we recommend to improve the, uh, or adjust the gyro model. The results show that a good bias estimate is crucial for a performant, for, for performant uh, extended Kalman filter. And in our case, we need to calibrate the system after each orbit to ensure acceptable filter outputs. For, because for simulation uh, longer than 90 minutes, it's difficult to achieve acceptable performance without adjusting the gyro parameters. We've already reached the end of the presentation. We've shown that MEKF with one gyroscope and two star trackers allows an attitude estimation with an accuracy of 0.3 arc seconds. But we've also shown that we encountered um, you know, some problems during our simulation, mainly we were not able to estimate correctly the biases of the gyroscope. So what was the problem? Well, we're not sure. Could be initial conditions, the modeling of the sensor, the implementation of the MEKF, and we're not ruling out coding errors, although we haven't found any, of course. So if we had had more time, we would have worked on, you know, we would have tried different sensor data, tried another filter, such maybe the uh, unscented Kelman filter, or we could even have tried to replace or add other sensors like a sun, sun sensor and a magnetometer, but that's, that's for future work. On that, we thank you for watching and we wish you a very good summer.